You guys wanna see something crazy? This gun weighs almost identical to this little fella, even if I take off the flash can and the flashlight. This thing is light, like you could, you could play baseball with this thing. I mean, you could just, whew. I mean, I've never felt an AR-15 that's as light as this guy. So this is the Faxon FX 5500 and you're gonna notice dead sexy carbon fiber going right through there. So funny story, I got this gun a couple of weeks ago. Faxon hit me up, they said, hey, do you wanna check out this lightweight rifle that we have? And I was like, well, duh, I've never tried a high-end rifle. In fact, all of my AR-15s that I've ever built, if you stripped them down of all their upgrades, they're usually just basic rifles. You know, I got some Aero Precisions, I got some Palmetto State Armories, and then I'll add, you know, triggers and nice little goodies to them to make them, you know, a little bit better. But at the end of the day, they're your mediocre AR. So I really wanted to see what a high-end AR-15 look like so we could do some comparisons for those well when i pulled this out of the box i did not expect it to be as light as it was i, I was just blown away this rifle weighs 4.95 pounds my cmmg banshee you know granted that i don't have all this stuff on it weighs four pounds 10 ounces. This little guy is about the same weight as this giant fella right here. What's even crazier about this is I know a lot of you guys out there have seen the skeletonized AR-15s, just like the ones from F1 Firearms. So last week when I was in Indianapolis for the NRAM event, I went by the F1 Firearms booth and I was like, dude, I was with my buddy Glock guy 226. And I was like, let me check out one of these, you know, F1 skeletonized ARs to see how it compares to this thing. And the damn thing was heavier. Straight up, I was like, dude, this is not as light as they're trying to make them out to be. And I thought that was crazy because this gun isn't skeletonized anywhere. Like there is a tiny little skeletonized part right here on the shell deflector, but there is a one part of it that is skeletonized, which is the bolt carrier group. But I couldn't figure out where they shaved all the weight on this thing to be such a lightweight rifle. And then I found it. So let's dive up close. Look at this thing up close and personal because there is a lot to know about this gun. There is so much engineering and research and development that goes into this, it's mind boggling. But the crazy thing is, it's still cheaper than the F1 firearms skeletonized ARs. And just a heads up guys, if you see anything in this video that you wanna pick up, follow the first link in the video description and that'll take you to a separate page where the build list will be located. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, this entire gun, you know, obviously minus the optics and the mag, unloaded weighs 4.95 pounds. It's a 14 and a half inch pencil barrel. And this one is has a one and eight twist rate and it is chambered in 5.56. This gun is tuned to be used with 55 grain ammo, which is perfect because that's usually the most common type of 5.56 that we can find, you know, at our local stores. This whole gun is designed for competition use, so that's why they made it super light and super fast. It is nitride coated inside and out. And you're gonna notice something very interesting right here. This is their compensator, and it's got the same diameter as the barrel does. It's a little bit bigger, but the primary reason for that is the gas block. You see, when you have a 14 and a half inch barrel and you wanna put it on a gun with a butt stock, making it a rifle, you have to have the muzzle device pin and welded. And if you ever need to remove your gas block, you gotta take this to a gunsmith, get this all uninstalled and get the gas block off. Well, with this one, that's not a case. The gas block slides right over this. The gas block is also adjustable. You can see right here in the top, right where my thumb is, there is a little screw in there and it comes with the appropriate wrench in order to tune that. And there is instructions in the box on how to tune it. Now the barrel itself only weighs 1.15 pounds and it is magnetic particle inspected and it has an 11 degree target crown. What makes it a fast shooting but a soft shooting gun is that it's using a mid-length gas system instead of a carbine length gas system. The further out your gas system is, you know, the softer it's going to shoot. Now let's talk about this handguard. So this is the carbon fiber handguard um, from Fax and Firearms. They got different lengths. This one's a 13 inch one. This one weighs 6.12 ounces uh, without the barrel nut and the barrel nut weighs 1.28 ounces. So in essence, you know, this thing weighs approximately about seven to eight ounces. 
So that's really good. It's only half a pound for the entire handguard with the barrel nut. Now I want to show you some other cool stuff that I noticed about it. Um, this cool little mag. I'll have a link for these down below if you want to check out these mags. I thought it was kind of cool. I haven't tested it yet, so I can't really say yay or nay. It's from a company I never heard of, but it's definitely sexy. So I'll have links down in the description for all that. So basically all the magic happens in this upper receiver, the barrel, you know, like I said, it's like 1.1 1 .1 something pounds. This is about half a pound for the handguards. You're just over two pounds with just the barrel and the handguard, which is insane. The next place where they saved weight is a little bit here on this shell deflector. They kind of got that skeletonized, but as far as the receivers are concerned, that is it. But here's the next place where they saved a lot of weight. Wipe this off. This is actually my first time cleaning this up since I've shot it. So this is the Faxon mil spec skeletonized bolt carrier group look at how sexy that bad boy is it is insanely light complete with the bolt installed it weighs 8.5 ounces so approximately half a pound it still maintains the forward assist serrations it still maintains the full auto capability if you can legally own a full auto and it just looks amazing it's actually coated a qpq method of salt bath nitride same thing for the inside and the outside of the barrel it's magnetic particle inspected and high pressure tested um, the bolt is made out of a 9310 tool steel and it's shot peened magnetic particle inspected and nitrated the extractor right here is made out of s7 tool steel and it is heat treated as well now the the carrier itself is made out of made out of a 8620 steel you know the carrier doesn't need to be as strong as the bolt itself but it's still very strong which, but it's crazy on how light this thing is so basically all of the weight savings is in this upper receiver I put on this little 3D printed Ford grip, you know, because of the theme of being lightweight. If you ever get your gun too hot, these things can like melt. So I don't always recommend 3D printed stuff for guns, but that one seems to be working so far. The other cool thing is they are using the Radian Raptor charging handle. Um, they partnered up with Radian, so that's awesome. And then on top, I got the Vortex Crossfire. This is a budget, a super budget friendly red dot and so far so good. I've been shooting the crap out of it, but I'll have a review on that later. Now on the lower receiver here, there's really not much as far as making it lightweight aside from the stock here, which is the mission first tactical minimalist stock, which I love these, you know, I had two of these on two of my other rifles and they're good to go. But I found it very fascinating that they didn't skeletonize this. A couple of other cool things on the lower has a radian safety selector. Right now it's in 90 degree. Right now it's on a 45 degree mode, but you can change it to be 90 degrees if you do prefer. But I am loving this safety selector. I've never liked safety selectors that were aftermarket, but this one is amazing. And then we have the Hyperfire EDT three trigger. I was like, wow, it's not, it's not crazy light, but it feels like it's rolling on ball bearings. So if you, if you look at it, it's kind of a hybrid. You got a curved part, then you got a flat part. So if you want to pull up here, you get a heavier trigger pull. Right there. If you want a lighter trigger pull, you come down towards the bottom, and now it's lighter. And also, it came with an additional spring, so you can kind of fine tune the trigger. Now, I can't remember where I put my trigger pull gauge, guys. I, I literally just had it uh, two days ago when I was testing the trigger pull on this. Otherwise, I'd pull it on camera, but it is pulling at a dead on 4.2 pounds. And you're going to see the range footage right now. Back up top. I also forgot to mention that it comes with this awesome case that has the label on it. But, you know, it should for the price that it is. I also meant to show you guys one other thing. And I forgot to mention this up close. Inside of here, you see that little detent that's like at the bottom of the receiver? That can be tightened through here. And it's not the bolt that attaches the grip. What it does is it adds a little pressure between the upper and the lower. You get zero wobble. And then here's a cheaper one. Those are the types of little things you pay for when you buy a high-end rifle versus a mid-range rifle. I still haven't had a chance to make my AR-15 like barrel video, you know, on how to choose barrels. Still working on, you know, acquiring all the knowledge and things like that and putting that video together. But one thing you should know is typically with pencil barrels, they're not quite as accurate as, you know, a heavier barrel. And the reason that is, is because it will start getting a little flutter sometimes. That is due to the stress that's created in the barrels when they make it so low profile. 
Well, Faxon figured out a way to make it low profile and relieve the stress of the barrel so you don't get quite as much you know, wonkiness with it. Now, I'm not a long range shooter, so I haven't done any long range tests with this yet. I did see there was another channel, it may have been Iraq Veteran that did it, or was it Military Arms? I don't remember which. They've done a video on this, you know, testing it at longer distances, and it's not gonna be as accurate as something that has a very heavy profiled barrel, but it was definitely accurate. But I think the biggest thing that really surprised me was how fast I can shoot this dang thing. It is insane how fast I can go from low ready to firing it. It's crazy. So like essentially I got my safety on right here. Like you can literally just pop up like that quick. I have already disengaged the safety and pulled the trigger. You can see my safety's on, low ready, like that. That is insane how fast you can shoot with this. Now, well, the first time I took it out to the range, it was a little bit overgassed. Um, I couldn't really tell while I was shooting, but when I got home, I, I looked at the footage, I was like, yeah, we need to you know, fix that. Now, the cool thing is when you get this, you know, not only does it include the cool case and everything, but it includes the tools that you need for the adjustable gas block. It includes an, an additional trigger spring for the hyperfire trigger. And it also includes instructions on how to tune this gun before you go shoot it. I probably should have read those before I took it out, but I didn't do that. This is what it looked like the first time I took it out. Ooh. That's spooky. And I believe I got one or two cases of hammer follow on it, but that was just due to it being overgassed. So the second time I went back to the range after I looked at the footage, I just tweaked the gas port. They say to back it out all the way until it won't shoot, it won't cycle around. And then you tighten it like a quarter turn at a time until it starts cycling and that's usually gonna be your most optimum gas level. Once I got that in place, this is how it performed. <laughs> Now this gun is tuned to shoot 55 grain ammunition, 5.56. So that's what I put into it when I was tuning the gas block. So as you can see, it shot a lot softer and it was easier to shoot fast and I didn't get any hammer follow once I got my gas port all figured out. And before we get into the price, let's talk about the pros and the cons of this gun. Pro number one, it's light as a feather. I mean, you saw, I, you can swing this thing like a baseball bat and it feels like you have control of it, like you're not gonna lose it. Um, number two, it's using carbon fiber. That is an amazing pro. The next pro is, although it's using a pencil barrel, they have relieved all the stress in the barrel, so it's still gonna remain accurate. Is it gonna be as accurate as a heavy profile barrel? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on how far out you're trying to shoot. I'm not a long range shooter, so I can't really attest to that. The next pro is the trigger. Now, although they didn't go all out and put a two or $300 Geisley in it, this Hyperfire EDT3 trigger is absolutely amazing. And in fact, it comes with a second spring to put in it, depending on if you want to run it a little bit lighter, or a little bit heavier. The other cool thing about it was, was like I showed you up close, that proprietary trigger shoe design. It's like a curved trigger and a flat trigger all mixed together. Now let's get into the cons. If I had to give you some cons about this gun, my main con is gonna be on the handguard. Two things. I feel like that this portion here of Picatinny should at least extend out to this part right here, or at least put some M-lock up in here so I can attach a rail. Because if I wanted to put like, a, you know, a variable powered scope on it, sometimes the mounts, they wanna come out a little bit beyond. You should always try to keep all the mounts on your upper, but if they do happen to go onto your handguard, sometimes that can help. And I'd also, this isn't a huge thing, I'm nitpicking, I would like to have a little piece right here for a front sight post. And then thirdly, I kinda wish that the carbon fiber here was a little bit more narrow. It's a little bit girthy for me, and uh, I would like a slimmer handguard. 
So I think if they could figure out a way to keep a little more pick rail here, maybe put a little piece up here, or maybe make detachable pieces. That way we can keep it as lightweight as possible. And then make it a little thinner. I think this thing would be over the top. And what I mean by that is, I guess I'm just being a spoiled little brat here. If you guys have ever seen my 300 blackout, this is my all time favorite handguard. This is the Atlas handguard from Aero Precision. I will link it up below. But you can see how slim it is right here. So when I'm reaching out, like I can really get a good handle on it. You can also see how it extends out the rail at least a little bit. And then on the front, there's a little piece of rail right here. And this one's actually running a Faxon flame fluted barrel on it as well. That's kind of crazy. But I would like to kind of see that kind of design, but with this carbon fiber one, I think that would just make it sick as tits. Like that's just where my head's at. And that's pretty much it as far as cons. Everything else is a pro, but now we need to talk about the price. Now the price could be a pro or con, depending on how you guys want to look at it. The price is approximately $1,999. So almost two grand. And that seems like a lot until you start pricing other companies' lightweight AR-15s. Like I was talking about earlier with F1 firearms. Like their guns are fully skeletonized, the lowers, the uppers, everything. And I think the cheapest one that I saw was about $2,300 to $2,400. And it was about two pounds heavier than this gun. And so when you start looking at it with that set of lenses, right? You're not comparing this to Palmetto State Armory. You're not comparing this to Aero Precision, you're not comparing this to BCM. You know, not that BCM isn't a fantastic gun, they're actually awesome, but the purpose behind it is different. This is a competition gun. This is not like a gun you're gonna go out and try to defend the world with. I mean, you probably could, but it's not designed for that. This is designed to go fast and to shoot flat. And fast and flat it does. If you have $2,000 that you're looking to buy a pretty badass AR-15, I say it's a win. I mean, I've already put 657 rounds through this. I counted this time. I was trying my best, 657. You just get so much for your money. Let's say for example, you're like, dude, I don't wanna spend that much money. I got you covered. So because all of the weight savings is in the upper, all you really need is the upper. You can buy this whole upper receiver here. I think they're about eight, seven or $800 less than buying the full gun. The main weight savings comes from the bolt carrier grip, the handguard and the barrel. Do I think this is an awesome gun? Yes. Does it live up to the hype that I guess Faxon gives it on their website? Yes, and then some. I'd say like this, if you're just one of those people that doesn't like to tinker or build and you just wanna buy a super lightweight AR-15 and you, and you have a little money to spend, then this is a really good consideration. If you're, on the, if you're a part of the other part of the population that's like, yeah, I'd like to, but that's a little pricey, you could just buy the barreled upper and the bolt carrier group and all that cool stuff and it's a lot cheaper and you would pretty much have the same exact gun for a lot less of a price. But ultimately, it doesn't matter what I think about this. It matters what you guys think about this. I can think this is awesome and tell everybody I think it's awesome until my face is blue and because that's my truth, right? And knowing what I know about it now, I would definitely buy this gun because I know how much engineering went into this. I know how much research and development. I know what Faxon's quality control is like. But I wanna pass the question off to you guys. Let's just pretend money wasn't an option for you. Let's say you were a baller. Would this be a gun that you would wanna get? Or would you wanna get something different? Let me know down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback about that. But look, if this is too much for you, I'm gonna put a little link right here to a playlist on my stupid cheap AR builds. And you can go check that list out because you can build ARs for a lot cheaper. This just happens to be like the Nissan GTR of AR-15s. But until next time, guys, you stay sexy and I love you.